I've been looking at the book of Genesis. As we look at the book of Genesis today, I'm going to be speaking to you on the ministry of angels and the written word. The ministry of angels and the written word. As you look at what happened in the book of Genesis, you will find out that there's something that cuts across the fulfillment of the promises in the life of Abraham. The manifestation of angels. In Genesis chapter 18, in verse 2, and he lifted up his eyes and looked, and behold, three men stood by him, and when he saw them, he ran to meet them from the tent door and bowed himself toward the gr ground. In verse 9, and they said to him, where is Sarah the wife? And he said, behold, in the tent. Verse 16, the men rose up thence and looked towards Sodom. Verse 22, the men turned their faces from thence. Angels. Angels. Angels are supernatural beings that are created like us. But the difference is that they run only on instructions. Unlike man, that God has made free moral agents to make a choice. Angels don't have a choice. They run at the beat of God. And God has assigned angels to execute his word. When he gives his word, the angels make sure the word is fulfilled. And the angels don't give a hoot about anybody as long as God has spoken. And you know, there's someone in church today, God has spoken something good concerning you, and there are barriers and oppositions who want to stand in the way. Today, those angels will move for your sake. I thought I would hear you say amen. In Genesis chapter 19, in verse 1, there came two angels to Sodom at even, and Lot sat in the gates of Sodom. And Lot, seeing them, rose up to meet them and bowed himself with his face towards the ground. And he said, Behold, now, my Lord, turn in. If you look at the Lord, start with L, lowercase. I pray you into your servant's house and tarry all night. And he said, Nay, but we will abide in the street all night. And he went on and on. These are angels. They move at the beat of God. When Sodom was to be destroyed, God could have used men. God could have used anything. Angels. So angels, the same way they bring the promises to reality, angels are also the same ones that go forward to execute God's designed punishment for those who fight against his will, his word, or his children. And when these angels move to fight against any enemy or perceived enemy of God's children, the damage is irreversible. I know there's someone here in church today, people have ganked against you as a network. Today the Lord will send forth his angels. And when the angels move, they cannot be stopped. So as we look at the ministry of angels and the written word, what do they do? Number one, angels and the ministry of adoration. In Hebrews chapter 1 in verse 6, and again when he bringeth in the first begotten into the world, he said, and let all the angels worship him. One of the first things you will see angels do is angels are involved in the adoration of God. They worship him. In fact, that's their major assignment, worshiping God. Number two, we see, as we look at angels, let's look at their model of beauty in Revelation chapter 10 in verse 1. And I saw another mighty angel come down from heaven, clothed with a cloud, and a rainbow was upon his head. And his face was as if it were the sun, and his feet as pillars of fire. Angels reflect the beauty of God. Number one, Angels are involved in the adoration of God. Number two, angels, they reflect the beauty of God. As you look at these two things that are surrounding angels, if angels who are ministering spirits to believers have these two features, everyone who wants angels to operate around him needs to make sure he's better because the Lord says he makes us better than the angels. Am I right? So number one, if you are going to be able to experience the ministry of angels around you, you have to learn to be involved in the adoration of God. Number two, 
You have to learn to be clothed in the holiness of God. He says, as you look at the angel, it looks as if there is a song. So there is the glory after the grace. There is the beauty of the purity before the power. If you are also going to enjoy the ministry of angels, because angels will not operate where these two things don't exist. There needs to be around you that light. Angels move in light. If you are not a son of light, the angels cannot operate around you. They can only operate for punishment. And so if you want to experience the ministry of angels, then you need to understand that angels have a beauty around them that cannot be blemished. And as you look at yourself, there are people you don't want to mix with. I grew up in a local place, very, very local place. And where I grew up, some of my classmates ended up, you know, being some of the touts, the leaders of the touts and all that. And while I was growing up, sometimes when I go home to where my parents live, I see them and we greet each other. But as I started growing up and becoming, you know, better in my career and growing up, if I start going home sometimes and I see them, guess what happens? I start avoiding them and hiding from them. Why? Because I don't want to be going home with someone and one tout on the road will hail me. I know they hail in their language. And because we grew up together, they are not going to say they will see me and they will switch to smattering English. So when I'm coming, ah, okay, you don't come back. You know, those, I will not speak all those English. So you will not know I even know them. <laughs> I started avoiding them. Why was I avoiding them? I was ashamed to be associated with their language, with their dressing, with their actions, because I was becoming different. And now, if I see them, I even run away. Because there's no association. Angels operate in the same way. If you are not having that beauty of holiness, they will not want to associate with you. God will not even ask them to go and work for you because your prayers can't be answered. And so if you want to enjoy the ministry of angels, and as you look through Genesis chapter 16, chapter 18, and chapter 19, where we have the mention of the ministry of angels, why did the angel appear to Lot and not to his wife? The wife was defiled. Lot, in spite of everything in that land, was still standing. Why did the angel appear to Abraham and not to Sarah? Sarah had no faith. Sarah had no belief. Sarah did not trust that what God had spoken to Abraham would become a reality. In fact, when the angels were speaking, she went by the side. eaves dropped and started laughing. Did you read that in your Bible? And God, who had seen her heart before she manifested her action, God said, hey, angels cannot operate around you because the beauty that should connect you and the angels has broken. And if you are here this morning and you don't have that beauty of holiness, you are losing because the angels that have been assigned to you would be pulled back. And because God sees the hearts, the oppression of these angels is not what men see. It's God alone that sees it. So the secret sins that you do are so open and when they are open angels are recalled because you don't have the beauty that connects the angels i pray the lord will open your eyes because there are certain assignments that god wants to achieve in your life that angels are the ones going to when daniel was praying and the prayer looked as if it wasn't to be answered daniel's heart his beauty of holiness was so clear that God said, Angel, go and tell Daniel what is causing the delay. And once there is a revelation, there is an intervention. And God sometimes sends the angels for the revelation. So the reason why you have not experienced some types of intervention in your life is because the angel to bring the revelation is waiting for you to have the beauty of holiness. We also see that angels 
they are involved in the ministry of care. Angels and their ministry of care. In 1 Kings chapter 19, if you read from verse 4 to 8, Elijah was tired. He had just destroyed the prophets of Baal. And when he destroyed the prophets of Baal, he said, oh, this work is too tedious. Elijah did not have any human that could comfort him at that time because people said, Elijah, you are fighting the queen and the king. Who fights the queen and king and survives? And so they abandoned Elijah. But God never abandons his own. Like our chorister sang, when you're a friend of God, be rest assured that the resources of heaven will support you. When the chips were down and it looked as if there was no way, who came? Angels. I did not know angels know how to cook. They kept on feeding Elijah. You know, there are times that it looks as if there is no way out. There are times that it looks as if there is nothing. There are times that it looks as if your helpers are not even hearing from God. At such time when you need the intervention of angels, if you're a true friend of God, the angels will comfort. Reminds me of a particular minister, Smith Wigglesworth. And so, he needed to feed the people in the orphanage. And he was praying. And while he was praying, God said, I've supplied your breakfast. And he called all the people together. And when he called them together, there was no food. And he blessed the food. And they were asking him, Smith, where is the food we are going to eat? He said, God has said, he has provided the breakfast. Let us bless the food. And they started blessing the food. And while they were blessing the food, someone somewhere who had gone to buy something for his house, God used intervention and the angelic ministry to redirect him. He said he didn't know what he was doing. He came to the door of Smith Wigglesworth. As he finished the prayer, the man knocked on the door. He brought in breakfast. The ministry of care of angels. And when you eat angelic food, it gives you strength beyond the normal food. Did you read it about Elijah? Go to that passage, Elijah, in 1 Kings chapter 19. In verse 7, and the angel of the Lord came again the second time and touched him and said, Arise and eat, because the journey is too great for you. Look at verse 8. And he arose and did eat and drink and went in the strength of that meat 40 days and 40 nights. You know, when I read this verse, a day came, I was telling, you know, I don't like eating food because I think food. Is, um, food is difficult to eat. So I don't know those who like food. Please come and teach me how to like eating food. I don't know how people like food. Because for me, the, the, the exercise you have refused to do because you are lazy. When you eat, you have to do the exercise by force. You chew and chew. Some of them will almost break your teeth. Some of them will enter into your teeth. You now swallow. It is pain. So I used to ask. That can someone please give me a tablet that I will swallow, like the one the angels gave Elijah. And for 40 days and 40 nights, no need for food again. But I found out, I've asked doctors, I've had nutritionists, I've asked everybody in different parts of the world. They told me there is nothing like that. It's not human, it's angelic. When you need strength to go beyond the normal, sometimes you need the intervention of the angelic ministry. Then we see angels and their ministry of difference in Zechariah chapter 12 from verse 8 to 9. It says the Lord will defend the inhabitants of Jerusalem. How will he defend the inhabitants of Jerusalem? He says in that verse that he will send an angel. And when an angel is defending you, tell me who will fight you. I remember the story that our father was, you know, sharing with us um, in one of the messages some time ago about this little boy. And this boy, um, he, his sister didn't know he had um, this angel, just one angel surrounding him. And his sister belonged to one of these cultist group. 
And um, you know, this small boy, from what our father was sharing with us, then I don't think the boy was up to 10. The boy would just pray and sleep. And after he finishes his prayer and he sleeps, he didn't know that his little prayer was disturbing the witches. I pray that your innocent prayers will begin to cause confusion in the kingdom of darkness. And this boy, after he finishes his prayer, he would sleep. And, you know, these people were angry. And he said, why is your brother disturbing our operation? May your prayer begin to destroy the operation. And so they said they are coming to come and attack him. Every finger that is raised against you, may those fingers begin to wither. Yeah. And when they finish all their plans and plots and strategies, you know, sometimes God lets the enemies go ahead and plan because the time they should have been using to pursue other people, they'll be using it to plan against you without knowing that all their plans will fail. And eventually when they finished, they came to come and attack him. And this boy prayed they and when he finished this prayer, I told you that when angels are sent by God, it is irreversible. God had told the angels, protect this one. And so, eventually, those enemies came. And the sister and all her cohorts, they came at night to come and attack the boy. And when they came, many, they thought, oh, like the ones that came against, um, you know, Elijah. And when they came against Elijah, he said, uh, if I am a prophet, let what happen. Uh -huh. This boy didn't even know that they were coming. And so when they came, the angel said, ah, where are you coming to? They said, we are coming to see this boy. He's disturbing. Ah. They sent me on assignment. You had the earphone tree to come and touch the subject of my protection. The angel beat them up in the spiritual realm. In the physical, they were injured. And eventually, the sister ran to go and meet the small boy and said, please forgive me. Forgive. The boy said, I don't know what is happening. And the sister was begging, begging him not to kill me. The boy said, who will kill you? Ah, may battles you don't know be fought and won on your behalf in the name of Jesus. Eventually, the sister had to explain to him. The person they were trying to fight was now the one praying for them. Okay, I forgive you. Okay, kneel down there, let me pray for you. You know, the ministry of angels, they are defense. God makes them to protect you. You know, the other day, I was traveling somewhere, and because there were too many, um, what do you call them, too many security checkpoints, we needed to get there on time. So I told them to go and get me some escorts. And when they got this escort, you know, over zealous escorts, he saw me in the company vehicle. Maybe he thought I had money. And so, he was being over zealous. And as we were going like this, one um, vehicle was trying to fight on the road with us. And this man looked at him. He said, if you get near that guy again, I will shoot you. My man, I'm like, which type of problem is this? Me that I like going to where I go, nobody would know. And, you know, why the vehicle, their escort vehicle, they weren't in my vehicle, they had their escort vehicles and all that. Why the escort vehicle was going? Sometimes he would just open the door and bring out his head. And, and another one would come out there. In my mind, I would say, if human beings are protecting me like this, how much more angels? Praise the Lord. Because I looked at him. As he brought out his head, if another vehicle hit him, he's a human being. What will happen? But an angel, if a vehicle should hit an angel, the vehicle will be destroyed. If an army should attack an angel, the army will be destroyed. If an angel should attack an army, the army will be destroyed. The ministry of defense of angels. God has set forth angels. Then we see the means of expression of angels. You know, one of the things God has uniquely assigned angels, he has made angels to be able to express things. You see that in the book of um, Zechariah chapter 3 from verse 5 to 6. You know, the angels are expressive. They can see. They can. The only thing is they don't cry because they don't feel the type of emotions that you feel. Then we see the matchless fidelity of angels. In Ze uh, Revelation chapter 7 from verse 11 to 12, you see there the angels, they do nothing but to say amen to God. Amen, blessing and glory. Amen, being so be it. Unto God forever and ever. In Revelation chapter 10 verse 1, we see the angels before the majestic God. Also, angels and the mystery of holiness. Angels operate for those who are holy. You see that in Matthew chapter 25, the Bible calls them the holy angels in verse 31. In Revelation chapter 14 from verse 9 to 10. Then, we come to these angels 
and their mind-blowing intervention. You know, I've seen the ministry of angels a little bit in my life, and the interventions are always mind-blowing. But before I tell you about my personal experience, let me show you one in the Bible. In the book of Numbers chapter 22, in verse 23, Numbers chapter 22, in verse 23, and the ass saw the angel of the Lord standing in the way, and he saw drawn in his hand, and the ass turned aside out of the way and went into the field, and Balaam smote the ass to turn her into the way, but the angel of the Lord stood in a part of the vineyard. A wall being on this side, a wall on that side. And when the ass saw the angel of the Lord, she thrust herself against the wall and crushed Bilam's foot against the wall and he smote her again. If you read up to verse 27, when the ass saw the angel of the Lord, she fell down before Bilam and Bilam's anger was kindled and he smote the ass with his staff. Angels, they get involved in mind-blowing intervention. You know, Bilam was going to go and attack the children of Israel. And God had sent an angel. That Balaam must not arrive in that place. Except Balaam changes what he had gone to say. And because Balaam said, I will not listen. The animal started seeing and hearing an angel. And we've seen various mind-blowing intervention of angels. Joseph, had, when they surrounded him and they said, Joseph, had, the armies ganged up together to fight him. The Bible says as they started, did you see it? Singing, the Lord did what? He raised up ambushment against the enemies. Mind-blowing interventions. Mind-blowing intervention. You know, if you've not started experiencing the ministry of angels, maybe you have not started seeing them, after the prayer today, the Lord will open your eyes to new levels and realms of the ministry of angels. I told you in church about the other day, I was going somewhere, and while I was going somewhere, there was battle. Then I was still in the north. There was a real battle. Fight. And they had been burning down a couple of our churches. But as they burn the church, we go back and we rebuild another church. If they burn the church, we build with uh, wood and all that. We build the church with metal. And every time they burn the church, they say, well, I will call me. Um, Pastor, they have burnt another church. I will ask where? In so-so place. So what should we do? We have to rebuild another one. And they started targeting, you know, the ministers of the church. And there was a program that was held somewhere, that was held somewhere. And I prayed that the Lord said, you have to go for this program. And you know, in those days, may the Lord take us back to those days. Those days, you didn't care about anything. You didn't care about her. What am I going to go with? What if so-so happened? The Lord said, go. And so... I entered the vehicle and we started going. And while we were going, they warned me. They said, ha, are you going to come out alive? I said, there is really nothing to lose. I don't could have much money in my account. Because I had given my ATM card to the church. That um, if there is any need, oh, just if you don't see me, if I don't come back, finish all the money so that Antichrist will not use the money in my account. You remember how we used to talk in those? How many of you remember? I said, this is it. The key of my room, I'd given it to somebody. I'm going to so so place so in case I don't come back. Those are my clothes, <laughs> so that they will not just be wasted. Give everything. The only thing I held was my Bible. And then I still used to play keyboard. But now I can't play that much because the people who are playing now, when I see their hands on the keyboard, I'm looking, hey, is this normal keyboard? Because they are now very good in playing. So I went there. And while I was going, the battle was tough. Because... They were looking for those who were not of them to destroy. But the Lord told me he would take me there. So I didn't bother. And while I passed where they were fighting, I heard no sound. I saw no evil until I got to where I was going. And when I got there, the brethren who were waiting for me to come and minister there, they were standing in front of the church. That's why did this man take on this suicide mission? The ministry of angels. Mind-blowing intervention. By the time I appeared to them in front of the church, they said, where did you pass through? I said, the road. What vehicle did you enter? I said, I saw a vehicle that stopped to pick me. They said, no, you cannot be on this road. I said, but that's where I passed. They took me back there. I saw chaos on the road. When I was coming, I saw nothing. That was when I knew angels are real. And look at me here today. 
Dearly beloved, there are times that you need mind-blowing intervention of angels for certain battles. Because when the Lord doesn't want you to have a scratch, he sends angels before you. And when God wanted to fulfill his promises for Abraham, he sent angels. And these angels are knowledgeable because of time. Angels are ministering spirits to ministers. We see that in Hebrews chapter 1, verse 4 to 7. Then, because of time, let's talk about angels and their mighty strength. In Matthew chapter 28, from verse 2 to 4, it says, Behold, there was a great earthquake, for the angel of the Lord descended from heaven and rolled back the stone from the door and sat upon it. His countenance was as lightning. And his raiment white as snow. And for fear of him, the keepers did shake. And they became as dead men. You know, these people, they thought they had put Jesus inside a tomb. They limited Jesus to ordinary stones without knowing that there were angels that were assigned to him. And eventually, they were guarding the stomp. And they stood in front of the storm. And God said, it's time for Jesus to come out. Listen to me. When God says it is your time, a thousand and one demonic soldiers cannot stop you. Because as they were protecting the stone, the Bible says, the angels came. The angels did not need their permission to roll away the stone. Every stone that has locked you from progressing, today, we don't need permission. The stone will be rolled away. Eventually, when the angels came and the angels rolled away the stone, the Bible says that the Lord opened the eyes of those soldiers to see the angels. When they saw the countenance of the angels, they bowed before them. The mighty strength of angels. Angels and their ministry of valor. If you check Exodus chapter 23 from verse 23 to 30, the Lord said, see, the children of Israel, you have a battle to fight. He said, because you have a battle to fight, my angels shall go before you. My angels shall go before you. And he said, as you meet these people, my angels will help you defeat them. As you meet these people, my angels will help you defeat them. The reason why I've told you about the ministry of angels is for you to begin to understand that there are certain levels you need to get to. That the angelic ministry is important to help you to get to. And as I wrap up, the question is, how do we begin then to experience the ministry of angels in our lives? Abraham experienced it. Many times, the angel will come and speak to him. Many times, there will be conversation between him and the angels. Sometimes, before God will speak to Abraham, God will send the angels to do the preparation of God's coming to speak to Abraham. So today, if you have not started experiencing that ministry of angels, number one, I told you, check your life. If your life does not have the beauty that will attract the angels, make sure your life has that beauty, the beauty of holiness. Then after that, angels respond either due to praise or prayer. Praise or prayer. If you pray, like the children and, and Paul and Silas prayed, and this praised, angels move. Also, angels respond due to worship of the word. Let me read a Bible passage for you. First Chronicles chapter 20. I'm going to read verse 22. First Chronicles chapter 20, verse 22. And when they began to sing and to praise... They began to sing and to praise. Because of time, before this, they had prayed. The word had been given by the prophets. But the Lord said, it is time to worship. You know, when you worship God, and you trust him in your worship, it's an evidence that you believe he would move. Praise the Lord. Genuine worship is an evidence that you believe that God will move. Because if I meet you, and I say, give me a gift. And you say, you have given me. The only reason I will thank you, even though I have not collected the gift, is because I believe you are capable and you have done it. Worship is trusting the capability 
of God's word. He's saying thank you before you see the evidence. And that's why when they prayed and the word was given, when they came back to the prophet, the prophet said, go and worship God. Praise the Lord. The Bible says they began to sing and to praise. And as I say, do you know what happened? Are you with your Bible? The Lord said what? Ambushments. Are you looking at your Bible? The Lord said what? Ambushments. Against the children of Amnon, Moab, and Mount Seir, which were come against Judah, and they were smitten. For the children of Amnon and Moab stood up against the inhabitants of Mount Seir, utterly to slay and destroy them. And when they had made an end of the inhabitants of Seir, everyone helped to destroy another. And when Judah came to all the water in the wilderness, they looked into the multitude, and behold, they were dead bodies falling to the earth, and none escaped. I told you, when angels are sent on an assignment, what did I tell you about that assignment? It's irreversible. So one way to experience that ministry is for you to get to that point where you would begin to trust the capability of his word. And that's true worship. And so this morning, as we study and we wrap up, it is written, you need to ask yourself, when will I begin to experience this ministry? Abraham experienced the ministry of angels. Even Lot, that joined with Abraham, with everything, experienced the ministry of angels. You are fighting your battles too much on your own. That's why you are wearing out too fast. There are angels that are assigned to avoid the scratch of the warfare touching you. The reason why there are too many scars on you is because you are fighting battles that angels should have fought and won on your behalf. Because he sent them already. And this morning, as we go into this last day, and the word of the Lord comes to you, I pray for you that you would avoid those battles because those battles will be won before you get there. In the name of Jesus. So I don't know what you may be passing through. Abraham passed through a whole lot of things. But the angels never departed from him. And this morning, it's time for help to come your way. Let's rise up upon our feet. And just begin to tell the Lord, Lord, angels that will execute your written promises concerning me. Lord, let them begin to move. Begin to speak to the Lord in prayer and say, Lord, this morning, how I yield myself to you. I've been fighting too many battles on my own. I've been engaging in too many things. The scars of the war are becoming too much on me. The scars of the war are becoming too much on me. Look at Abraham. As you look at his life, he, there are many scars which he could have experienced he never even saw because those angels that the Lord had sent they were doing their work. Why don't you tell the Lord, Lord, let me begin to experience an awesome feeling of your presence around me everywhere I go. When I need defense, let me feel your presence around me. That would make me assured that the angels of defense that have been sent around me at work this morning begin to tell the Lord, Lord, I come before you. Anything that would have broken the connection that would have made the angels assigned to me to be recalled back. This morning, Lord, I come to you. Let that connection be restored. Let that connection be restored. Speak to the Lord and tell the Lord, I don't want my flanks to be exposed. I don't want my life to be exposed. I don't want things that concern me to be exposed. How will you know there is a prince of Persia that is hindering you? If the angel to bring that news to you is unable to come, I told you where there is a revelation, there can be an intervention. The angel that is meant to come forth to bring that revelation. If the angel is unable to deliver the revelation, how will the intervention happen? That's why you want to tell the Lord this morning, Lord, please, if there is anything that has broken that connection with you, Lord, this morning, I come to you. I come to you. If you know you are living a life of sin, secret sin, presumptuous sin, private sin, public sin, 
you are destroying yourself because the angels are pitying you. The angels are saying, if only he knew the assignment had been given concerning him. If only she knew the assignment. Look at Lot's wife. She could not experience those angels. That's why after all her labor, she became a pillar of salt at the end of time. Without the ministry of angels assigned to you, you will labor. And when it comes to the time for you to get the fruit of your labor, like Lot's wife, you become a wasted monument. So I want to tell the Lord, this morning, Lord, I need your presence. I can't go without your presence. I can't do anything without your presence. I can't do anything without your presence. If you know there is a break in that connection, why like the psalmist, can't you come to the Lord and say, restore to me the joy of my salvation. Like the psalmist, cry to the Lord and say, Lord, I cannot afford a break in transmission with you. I cannot afford a break in my connection with you. Because this morning, a restoration is taking place. You have been restored so that those angels on assignments we get to do what they are meant to do. It's time this morning. It's time this morning. It's time this morning. Enough of the scars of war on you. Enough of the scars of the battle on you. There are scars that you should get. There are scars that should not be yours. You struggled and fought too long on your own. He sent forth angels to go forth before you. Where are those angels? That will make a way before you get there. Where are those angels? Tell the Lord this morning. Lord, I cannot afford living on my terms without you any longer. I cannot afford going into battle without you. I cannot afford laboring and not seeing anything. I cannot afford the emptiness without you. I cannot afford the emptiness without you. This morning, restore me, O Lord. Restore me, O Lord. We are here this morning. For I release you to worship and I come to give you the prophecy of God concerning you. You are there this morning. And you don't want that emptiness to continue. You are here this morning. And you know that sin will not let those angels walk. The way they've been assigned for you. All eyes closed, all eyes bowed. You want to give your life to Christ this morning? Or you want to be restored back to Christ this morning? Wherever you are, just raise up your hand and I will pray with you. Before we get into worship. And then I can pray and release. 
unto you what God has assigned for you this morning. I'm waiting for you wherever you are. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. You want to experience a new joy of salvation this morning. You want that emptiness to be replaced this morning. God bless you. I can see you outside there also. God bless you. I can see you there. God bless you. God bless you. Yes, I can see you at the extension. I want to pray with you this morning while your hands are raised. God bless you. Yes, I can see you there. Just tell the Lord, Lord, I come to you. I'm not going to fight this any longer. Lord, I come to you. I'm not going to run away from you any longer. Lord, I come to you. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Oh, I can see you there. God bless you, my sister. God bless you, my brother there. Yes, I can see you too now. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Oh. Yes, I want to pray with you. Those whose hands are raised. Father, I thank you. For those who have decided now, Lord, to give their lives fully to you. Thank you, Father. I pray, Lord, you will touch them. You would restore to them the joy of salvation. Every intervention that has been lost because of the gap between them and you. I ask Lord that from today going forward, as you give them the joy of salvation, I pray the intervention in their lives will continue. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. God bless you for the next few minutes. You know, today is not a day of praying because the word is about to be uttered. And I'm going to be speaking into your life and your situation. But we want to trust God for the fulfillment of what he is going to say even before we begin to see the manifestation. I'll hand you over to the choir. Just forget every other thing and worship the Lord at this time. No one like you, Jesus, no one like you. No one like you, are we my own? No one like you. No one like you, Abba Father, no one like you, Adonai. You are the God of everything. No one like you. Lift up your hands, everybody. Say no one, no one. No one like you, Jesus. No one like you. No one like you. Are we my own? No one like you. Can you wave your hands to the King of Kings? No one like you. Hello, do marry. No one like you. Adonai. You are the God of everything. Inside me, Yahweh is inside me. Because of the angelic ministries, you know, because you are not going alone, you are going to be going with angels on your right. You are going to be going with angels on your left because the angels of the Lord will be intervening in your life. The Bible also makes us to understand that greater is He, greater is He that is in you. I don't know what that is. Greater, greater than the greatest. You are 
you are breaking new territories you are entering new territories you are entering new breakthroughs doors are beginning to open yeah, it's time to take new territories it's time to move you have dwelt too long on this mountain it's time to move it's time to move. Favor. favor that will open doors are coming your way. Lord, I'm walking favor that will break new territories are coming your way. I'm moving favor with that will make your marriage become a reality is coming your way. Favor that will favor. make your family blessed without measure is coming in your way. Yes! I'm Launch into new in territories. Launch into new territories. Launch into new territories. Raise your hand up to heaven and say, Lord, I receive it. Lord, I receive it. Lord, I receive it. Lord, I receive it. I'm breaking new territories. I'm breaking new territories. I'm breaking new territories. I'm moving. I'm moving. I'm moving. I'm moving. I'm moving. Favor to open new doors are coming my way. Favor to open new doors are coming away. I'm moving. Unstoppable power. 
Unstoppable anointing. Unstoppable grace. Unstoppable grace. Yes. Doors open. Yes. I see them opening. Receive it. Receive it. Receive it. Receive it. Receive it. Receive the grace for new exports. The grace for new exports. Yes. Yes. No man born of a woman will stand before you any longer. Every movement work that has been guided up against you, we bow for your sake. Receive it this morning. Receive it this morning. Receive it this morning. Hallelujah! He's fighting your battles for you. He's fighting your battles for you. In Jesus' name we pray. The word for you this year is you are breaking new territories. You are breaking new territories. I heard it very clear that you are breaking new territories. Marriage has looked difficult because there have been challenges that are mysterious. I got the comfort of the Spirit. In your marriage, you are breaking new territories. I got the comfort of the Spirit. That everything that has made your marriage to remain a mirage. This 2022. That mirage is disappearing because your marriage is a reality. I got the comfort of the Spirit. That thing that has made your family to look as if it's tough. And there is no way out because it looks as if every step you take is a step deeper in the mud. I got the comfort of the Spirit. Your family will be favored. Your family will be favored. I got the comfort of the Spirit. That the favor that will come your way this year will be a compensation of the rejections of the past. I got the comfort of the Spirit that the doors that will open for you this year will be a consolation for the pains of the past. I got the comfort of the Spirit that the healing that is coming your way this year will be a healing that will confound the medical science. I got the comfort of the Spirit that help that will come your way this year will be help that will be unstoppable. I got the comfort of the Spirit. Divine protection that will surround you this year will be the protection that no one will be able to penetrate. I got the comfort of the Spirit. You have been expecting and expecting, but your expectations have remained in the realms of dreams that don't come to pass. That this year 2022, your expectations will be fulfilled. That this year 2022, men will run to accomplish those expectations. That this year 2022, you have been expecting, expecting, expecting. I got the comfort of the Spirit. That in this year 2022, without you waiting and dragging and delaying, surprises that will make you know the reality of God's power is coming your way. I got the comfort of the Spirit. You have been hearing testimonies. You've been seeing people occupy heights. I got that comfort of the Spirit. You will be the testimony this year. I got the comfort of the Spirit. That there is something that has delayed. And now you have been told it is not possible. I got the comfort of the Spirit. That way you have been told it's not possible. They will be searching out for you. Amen. I got the comfort of the Spirit. That blessings that no man can measure. They cannot measure it because they cannot connect those type of blessings to you. I got the comfort of the Spirit. Those blessings are coming your way. The Lord wants me to let you to know. That His presence with you this year as you remain with Him will make you to be a mountain that cannot be moved. I got the comfort of the Spirit. The Lord told me, I heard it clearly, 
and I felt the comfort of his spirit around me that this 2022 you will be a moving force no man can stop father I've given your word to your children let it be fulfilled you have started fulfilling it I have seen testimonies that have shocked me in January for every remaining day of this year let your children's mouth be filled with testimonies let celebrations come their way I speak to every situation that may want to bring fear or unbelief to your way before they come your way you will surmount those mountains Lord I thank you I thank you <laughs> I see celebration of marriages I see celebration of children I see celebration of jobs that are multiples of the current I see celebration of fresh anointing I see celebration of ministry, ministries penetrating areas I see penetration of favor and promotion I see celebration of grace beyond measure I see celebration of glory that cannot be understood I see celebration of mysterious celebration I see celebration of celebrations thank you father oh in Jesus name we pray just raise up your hand and say Lord thank you thank you thank you thank you thank you God bless you we've come to the end of the service God bless you